Hello you! In today's video, we're gonna explore this beautiful snowy Canada. Right now, we're on the road to a park that looks like an open zoo, but it's actually a natural museum. And all the species are living in their natural habitat and we get to drive around and watch them from a certain distance. Or if you're lucky enough, with almost no distance, where we hope to be lucky to remain alive. <laughs> Okay, of course it's not that desperate. The animals who don't really fancy us humans and become quite grumpy towards us are gently separated by a fence. Okay, so the reason I wanted to make this video in the first place is because many of us are constantly struggling to find inspiration or ideas to draw. Even when we go to places where we feel inspired, like I talked about in my latest video going to a fine arts museum, so I thought we could talk about this inspiration thing today and how I approached it this time. Whenever I go somewhere, at least for the past, what, um, eight years, I think, I'm constantly trying to balance out living in the moment and hunting for ideas to inspire my creations. This hunt can be me actively thinking of what to draw or paint or film, or actually taking pictures, writing ideas down, filming, things like that. I feel like there is a fine line with this, but as a general rule, I like to take pictures of things that I would like to look up later on, then when I'm back home, Google is my best friend. Like, for life. I say there is a fine line because we want to not worry about anything while we're experiencing something, but at the same time, we want to have a little something to help out our brain later on when we sit down to draw. When I think about this, I can't help but imagine the time where there were no phones, no photography, no Google. It was pretty much pencil and good old memory. Not always so good. Here's what I'm gonna be painting today. I start sketching on Photoshop, choose my color palette still on Photoshop, make a quick color test and decide on my medium. This time the chosen one was watercolor because, well, I missed them. It's been some time, they've been calling me. I print my test on normal copy paper, then trace it into watercolor paper with a light table. I'm not gonna lie to you, if it's a complex drawing with lots of details, I am very lazy and I just print it out directly into watercolor paper. I don't really like outlines with my style, so my pencil lines are very very faint. To make sure that they're pretty light, I'll go over them with a kneaded eraser. They turn out like this, barely visible, very hard to capture on camera, but at least I know that they're not gonna show through too much. Next thing I'll do is prepare my colors if the paint allows me to. Watercolor and gouache can be reactivated with water anytime, so if they dry by the time I begin painting, there is no problem, I can still use them. If it's acrylic gouache or acrylics, then that's a no-no because they cannot be reactivated. Yeah, it's annoying. And yep, lots of wasted paint. As you can see on the left, I have the palette I chose on Photoshop and printed out with my sketch. So I'll mix and try to match all my colors as close as possible to that. It's probably my favorite part. If you want to paint and you want to hire me to mix your paint on the side, I'm totally available. I don't eat much, so it's a really nice investment. Okay, so now let's go back to the inspiration talk. When I went to the park you saw in the beginning of the video, I knew I would probably get some cute shots and could film a bit for a video, but I also knew I wouldn't draw on the location, especially because it was like uh, super cold, like minus 20 cold. <laughs> So it's not just me, my sketchbook would probably hate me too for subjecting him to this freezing situation. In times like these, pictures are so helpful. I can get as many options and angles as I wish, especially with animals. Lots of poses and gestures are also important. It's a win-win-win-win situation. <laughs> when I came back home, I remembered to check the website of the park and there's a list of the animals that you could potentially spot around with an image gallery for each one, which is a great way of finding cool references. So as I was browsing around, I got really inspired by the bird pictures. 
first because, well, I didn't get to see any birds besides the wild turkeys. So checking them out was a really good surprise. And that was pretty much enough to get me very excited to try to paint them. Despite having so many good pictures of the animals I saw. I'm sorry bison and reindeer friends, you guys are like stunning. But blue jays and cardinals, oh well, stole my heart. It might have been the first time I really used a white watercolor pen. Usually I just ignore it, since we can dilute the paint for lighter washes. But this time I kind of wanted opaque pastels. So white watercolor is now a good friend. As much as I love swatching my colors digitally at first, sometimes it can get quite frustrating. There is pretty much an unlimited range of colors in Photoshop and it's very easy to pick. While with paints, there is a bit more work to get similar results and of course we cannot replace them as easily once down on paper. Yes, I'm always thinking of pros and cons when I switch media around, it's quite interesting. Here I'm doing a bunch of doodles, thinking I could use them to either make a pattern or to put around the birds later on. I like to scan everything in very high DPI and play with different compositions in Photoshop. Okay, before I leave you to watch me add some details with colored pencils, fun fact. I always forget to add something, then I'll be in the middle of cleaning up on Photoshop and bam, spot it right there. So then I have to go back to colored pencils, scan it again, redo the cleaning. This time I forgot a little separation on the legs of the goose, but I kinda confess I cheated and I just added it digitally. Yeah, I'm a cheater. Lazy one. Don't tell anybody. Here is the whole gang after scanning, adjusting the colors, cheating and all that. I got my favorite boy and did some fancy schmancy around him. I hope you like it. So that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one and until then I wish you a very good time. Bye! <laughs>